Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome back to Trend Simulator 2022. Today we're down at Orpington, we are essentially where we left off in the last video and we're going to be driving a service through to uh, a Luton bound service, 9 kilo 44, 1532 service from Orpington to Luton. So let's, uh, let's just kick things off by sticking Luton on the front of the train. Uh, we're using the Armstrong Powerhouse Enhanced Class 700 pack today, which if you are looking for that, if you're not quite sure where to find it, there is a link in the description. It's the shorter version. Uh, is, it, is it London Luton? No, it is just Luton. There we go. Oh, hang on. Yeah, get you cancelled off. And, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, we drove up here empty stock in the last video. That was when we had a first look at it. And now we're going to run it in service. Journey time today, roughly 50 minutes apparently we're leaving at 15.32 and we arrive at 16.18 so yeah roughly 50 minutes. Uh, now I am expecting a fairly clear run today uh, it seems to be the case first things first release the doors here at Orpington where you're booked to depart at 15.32 we've got no signal uh, it does say enjoy and don't forget to select uh, or set the destination and, uh, and that's good you know I'm uh, after the last run, it was quite a stop, start, stop, start, stop, start kind of affair. And uh, I am really quite looking forward uh, to hopefully getting quite a, you know, I'm, I'm going to say even a fast run. Press tab to obtain permission. Right, okay, so uh, yeah, we're, uh, right, we're off. Let's go. Shut the doors. And uh, you do actually get a very faint blue light light up when the interlock is, uh, is done there. There we go. We're off. Look at that. Beautiful train, isn't it? Um, uh, what do you think to the Class 700s? I'm a fan. Uh, personally, you know, do of course let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to hear, uh, you know, your thoughts on uh, on such matters. But yeah, I, I like the Class 700. I think it's a good looking train. I think to travel on, uh, it's absolutely diabolical. I think the seats are uncomfortable. Uh, the ride quality is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's not a bone shaker like some of the North's new uh, new traction. Couldn't possibly uh, give examples of that, for instance. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's by no means a bone shaker. It's quite smooth. I mean, it was built by the Germans. Of course, it's brilliant. Uh, but, yeah, it could just do with a few <laughs> a few seats that are a little bit more comfy in. Do you not agree? You know, we, we all love a bit of comfy seating. It's, it, we are bereft of comfy seating on, uh, on the 700. I mean, where are we going today? So we are going as far as uh, as Black Friars. We're calling it Petswood, Bickley, Bromley South, Shortlands, Ravensbourne, Beckenham Hill, Bellingham. That's where we started in the last episode. Catford, Crofton Park, Nunhead Park. No, no, Nunhead Platform. Peckham Rye, Denmark Hill, Elephant and Castle, and Black Friars. So it's quite a lengthy journey today. Uh, we are on the London and South Dover and that route. Yeah, you know exactly the one I'm on about, don't you? And uh, this is the first time I've played Train Simulator since uh, since I started with the whole... Um, oh, hang on. Yeah, since I started with uh, playing Roblox. I need to remember, I can't hit the platforms at, uh, at 70 mile an hour and still stop like you can in Roblox. Uh, you need to also remember that there's some physics on this game, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we need to uh, we need to just take it nice and steady and make sure we stop everywhere and make sure it's a good journey. Oh, it's it is a pleasure to drive this thing. I really do like the 700. And of course, at this area of the Thameslink network, we are uh, we're driving alongside. 465s, 375s, you know, all the general southeasterny things. Oh, that, that would be the pantograph button, not the door button. Yeah, the, the pantograph will not help you here. In fact, it will spring off the top and, uh, and then the train will have a paddy. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd absolutely love to say that this would be the first time that that had happened. But it did happen in real life. Uh, a driver of a, uh, of a Hitachi uh, did forget to put the pan down and, uh, and ran out of wires. 
and uh, and the whole thing just kaboing, boing, however you want to say it, as long as it's got an oing on the end, uh, flew off the top of the train, and uh, and the train had a paddy, because obviously the train thinks there's meant to be a pantograph on the roof, and, and there wasn't, so the train is, uh, oh, hang on, I'm forgetting to put myself in neutral. Yeah, the, the train was having an absolute fit, so, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be the first one if I did uh, forget, or if I was springing pantographs off of roofs. Yeah, definitely wouldn't be the first. There you go, keep looking for that. I mean, obviously, in real life, we will be looking at this driver on the operating style camera. But obviously, we don't have such luxuries in, uh, in train simulator. Which, it, it does kind of make me wonder why not. You know, surely it must be possible to do. I mean, hell, when we were playing Roblox, and, and this is what really annoys me, because Roblox, people were laughing, you know? when they saw I was playing Roblox. They were mocking. They were laughing. Joe, it's a children's game. But yeah, Train Simulator could learn so much from that. I mean, essentially, it's a kid's game. But it's really popular. And why is it popular? Because you can play with your friends. I mean, wasn't Train Sim World at some point in the past promised that it would have a multiplayer feature so you could play with your friends? Where's that? It's never come. This is a really popular game because it's got third-party modding, hasn't it? Trains of World doesn't. But yeah, all those announcements, really, really well done. Uh, Charlie, who was the guy that did the Roblox, uh, the Roblox thing, he actually paid out of his own pocket, apparently. You know, to, to, oh yeah, make sure you don't set off as soon as the speed limit clears. Your whole train has to be past it in real life, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, he actually paid out of his own pocket to have those specially recorded. So if one guy, you know, on his own can afford that, why can't Dovetail Games? You know, Dovetail Games could go to, uh, is it Julie Julie Berry? Is she the one that does Thameslink? The, the posh lady that also does London Northwestern? Southern? You know the one, you'll have heard her voice. Why couldn't they pay her? That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Could you imagine if we had proper next stop announcements on this? It'd be ace. I mean, hell, the 185 views uh, yours truly's voice as, uh, as the next stop announcements. I didn't really like the way it was done, personally. I thought it was too loud. Uh, you know, you can't hear the announcements, and I thought they were going to muffle it so that we wouldn't be able to have it. Christ, we're in a really slow section here, aren't we? Let's have a... Let's have a... Ooh, that's a nice shot, isn't it? Get another one, just in case that tree were in the way. Heck, it's taking us some time to get to Bickley, isn't it? But yeah, I, uh, I would have preferred that if they'd have kind of muffled my voice, made it really, really quiet, uh, so that then, uh, you you know, you'd be able to hear this kind of voice that sounded a little bit like the guy from Transpennine. But unfortunately, because it played me at full decibel, uh, and there was no digital editing at all, you can quite clearly tell it's not the guy from Transpennine, it's Joe putting on a posh voice. Yeah, I do sort of uh, do sort of regret doing those announcements, but uh, it's not the end of the world. At the end of the day, it's it's better having those than no announcements at all. Though I don't know, is it? I I tend to use no announcements at all. Oh well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's personal choice, isn't it? Maybe I just am biased because I don't like hearing my own voice, which is why I never watch any of my content back. Yeah, it's uh, people can't believe I don't watch my own content back. We're gonna miss this station. My lord. Yep, you you need to start thinking train sim, Joe. You need to stop thinking Roblox. Flipping heck. Oh, well, it's under the front door. And to be honest with you, even though uh, most tox would have an absolute aneurysm seeing that, ah, it's not like you're going to fall out. You can, you can just see there's a bit of a step. You Mind the step, please. There we go. We're, uh, we're covered in a court of law. Crikey, yeah, you, you really need to kind of re-teach yourself how to drive a train. You're too used to driving at breakneck speed. Right, there we go. Let's get them doors shut. Uh, right, off we go. Straight up to 60. Got a bit of time to make up now, haven't we? 
That's a hell of a whistling sound coming. You know, through the train. Oh, there's a green uh, NRM on the uh, on the left there. Designed for Londoners. Oh, the irony. Yes, Londoners like to boil alive, so let's give them a bus with no windows and air conditioning that likes to break all the time. Oh, dear me. Always makes me laugh when they say, oh, we don't need windows because we've got air con. Mm hmm, yeah. You've clearly never worked a class 185 with no windows when the air con breaks. And it's full and standing on a summer Sunday. Ooh, yeah. You, uh, yeah. There's a, there's a lot to be said for the 158. Keep those windows shut because it's got air con. But there are windows there in case the air con breaks. You know, there's... That is ingenuity for you. You know, we'll, we'll have the best of both worlds. The air con breaks, we can open a window. So, uh, yeah, a lot of new stuff. Doesn't have that feature, does it? There we go. We'll just take it nice and steady. What time are we due in here? We're going to start... Oh, we're out at 43. Right, well, we've got a little while then, haven't we? I wonder if that 465 is going to go in front of us and gives a load of... Uh, Gives a few red signals. Or maybe we're going to go in front of him. Who knows? How can you have done that? You Yeah, it, 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 when you get down to slow speed, it doesn't seem to like stopping. Now we've just stopped in front of the railings. Yeah, you, you need to improve driving this, Joe. You need to get to... You, you perhaps... Should have got some practice in <laughs> before making an absolute arse of yourself uh, to however many people watch this. I was going to say millions of people on the internet, but you only have to look at my viewing figures to know it's not quite millions. I mean, I, I wouldn't say no if millions of people wanted to watch this, you know. Uh, yeah, certainly, uh, maybe I'd be able to retire from my job, dedicate my whole life to uh, to making content for you guys. Yeah, uh, maybe one day. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I certainly need to get a bit more practice in. Do feel a bit funny not looking out the window. Out the window? Not out the window. At the uh, at the cameras. You know, kind of, it's, it's dispatching blind, isn't it, essentially? Right, go, go, go. Get your foot down. I mean, these things are notoriously slower on DC uh, than AC, but crikey, this feels slow. This feels painfully slow. Again, it's just because I'm used to absolutely shooting from a standing start right up to 60 miles an hour just at the click of a finger. Heck, these stations are close together. These are less than a mile apart. I mean, that is just mental. Can only make you wonder, like, I wonder why they've got two separate stations. I wonder why they don't, uh, you know, just knock them down. Although the, the uh, if you look at the terrain, it is a little bit bumpy in between the two. And so I wonder why they don't just knock them down and build one in between. You know, with a really long platform. There we go, we'll take it nice and steady, and I'll still probably nearly miss the end of the uh, the sodding platform. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Tickly throat, that's no good. Probably because it's a bit dusty. It's the problem when it's a sunny morning, isn't it? You, uh, you, you see all the dust floating around in the air, you think, Christ, I could just sit there waving the hoover around in the air. That's not what you need. As long as it all keeps away from my PC. I don't want it all getting sucked in and clogging up the fans. And I'm telling you now, when I spent that money on this computer, it flipping needs fans. We must be one of the only houses on our street that the computer gets so hot. In the middle of December, we're sat there in, and, uh, in the bedroom. 
in t-shirts and shorts with the windows wide open in January. You know, there, there can't be many households, particularly in the fueling crisis at the minute, where we're sat here with the windows wide open because we're desperately trying to cool down. That's, that's how hot it gets. I mean, it doesn't tend to on train simulator. <coughs> Excuse me. It doesn't tend to on train simulator. It only really tends to when I play X-Plane. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> it's, it's just surreal how hot it gets in here. It tends to get quite warm when I'm recording in 2K as well. It's, the, uh, it's probably the process of going, no, can't you just record in 1080p like any normal person? No, is the, uh, is the answer to that, because it looks pretty. There we go, we'll just ease off a little bit. Oh, there's another one coming the other way. That's nice, isn't it? Give him a little wave. It's me. It's exactly the same bloke driving that train. You'd think they'd kind of mix it up a little bit, wouldn't you? Evidently not. There we go. Now the platform's been on the other side quite a few times, so make sure you release the correct side today. I like that. That's a good photo. Side by side, two different units. That's lovely, isn't it? And weirdly enough, even though it feels like we're coming into stations really slow, we are actually running uh, bang on time. That's good. Not due out until 48. Lovely stuff. Top stuff. Where are we now? Oh, we've done quite a few stations already, haven't we? And they'd say that time flies when you're having fun. It's absolutely right, isn't it? Yeah, neutral at stations, Joe. Come on. It's not hard. You proved you can do it before. You're, uh, you're just not doing it since. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I don't really use that often. I don't use the DRA. I always get told off by my viewers for not putting the DRA on. I am aware that I didn't then, but that's because we've got a green signal and I have observed that. And uh, other things, I don't put it in neutral when uh, when we're at stations. A, a fine example then. And then I get the, uh, the alarms blaring at me. I mean, I have got the alarms because they start isolated and, and that's quite annoying because, you know, the idea of a train simulator is we drive a train, you know, and we drive it properly. And I would prefer if they were all automatically on uh, the safety systems and they were non-isolated. And if you wanted to isolate them, you could do, you know, because I think there's probably more people out there that play this with the safety systems turned on than there are turned off. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do like to turn them off when I take a screenshot normally, because uh, when you're hurtling along, the worst thing is not seeing that the, uh, the DSD's going off. You miss it, you come to a grinding halt. You know, it's horrible, isn't it? Heck, we got to uh, we got to Bellingham a hell of a lot quicker than uh, than we got to Orpington from Bellingham when we were empty stock. Funny that, isn't it? We uh, we went empty stock non-stop to Orpington, and it took longer than uh, than stopping at every single flipping station. It can only make you wonder why we didn't just run in service. Because I mean, these are driver-only operated. Hypothetically, we could have done. Hey, what happened there? There we go, doors open. It's all looking good, all looking good. Beckenham Hill. See, this is an area of the world, I mean, I've said it in previous videos, the, the whole southeastern area of the world, I just do not know. You know, I, I have no idea where we are right now. Well, I mean, when I say I have no idea where we are, I know we're at Beckenham Hill. You know, I know that that's southeast UK somewhere. 
you know, I'm, I'm, I can, I can tell you that much. You know, I, I can just about do with that. But like, if you ask me to point at it on a map, I'd just kind of point to Kent. Everything south of London is just Kent. You know, that's or southeast. Sorry, Maidstone. I'd be pointing out there, and I know we're absolutely nowhere near Maidstone. We're probably actually closer to Brighton than Maidstone. At, at a rough guess. There you go. There's a siding on the right there where we started last time. I wonder if there's a depot here then for uh, for Thameslink drivers at Bellingham. I can't think of any other reason that they uh, that they'd leave some units there. Why there'd be a side in there? And it's clearly not a maintenance depot, is it? There we go. We're uh, we're perhaps getting even slower now, aren't we? What time are we due out? Oh, we don't have a time limit here. We just kind of stop and go as soon as we're uh, as soon as we're ready. No, we're laughing. Two seconds ahead of the ETA. Full steam ahead. Come on. A bit of a whistling sound, isn't there? I wonder if that's uh, if that's meant to be wind whistling from the uh, from the cab windows. I don't know. It'd be good if we did have uh, realistic cab whistling sounds. I know if you're uh, if you're driving a calf unit, hell, I mean there there really is whistling sounds from a calf unit. The uh, the cab windows. I mean, it's it's like kind of doing a hundred mile an hour in a in a Tupperware box. You know, there's they they don't seem particularly well put together. Um, but yeah, yeah, some realistic cab whistling on any sort of calf contraption is uh, would be absolutely sublime, wouldn't it? Absolutely sublime. I must apologise as well. I am quite tired today, and I'm, uh, I'm just uh, fighting to stay awake on this, which is probably not the best time to drive when you're tired. Uh, drive a train in particular, uh, but yeah, I've uh, I've been on very very early starts, and it's it's the first early when you you know because we work shifts, obviously working on the railway, it's full of shifts. Um, the first time you do an early shift, you never really sleep properly the first night. It's just kind of a a well known thing. Your body clock's not in the routine. I'm probably going to sleep like an absolute baby tonight, but uh, but yeah. There's a lot of people out there, you know, you might want to, if you're watching this video, if you don't already, you might want to work on the railway. And, uh, you know, the railway is brilliant. Let's stop at the stop car board. Thank you. There we go. The railway is a great industry to work in. It's a happy family full of people. I emphasise the word happy. Completely tongue-in-cheek, of course, because most of us are absolutely miserable. But uh, no, 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 it's, it's generally a really, really nice place to work. But a lot of people don't realise quite how... Uh, uh, varied the shifts can be. I mean, I started work at 01.45 this morning. 01.45 in the morning. I mean, that's about as extreme as it gets. You know, 01.45 until 10 past 8. And uh, no, sorry, I'll tell a lie. Half past 8. So, you know, it's uh, it's nice. You get to finish early. You've got the rest of the day to yourself. But, oh my lord, I tell you, getting up for, uh, for 01.45 in the morning is flipping hard work tell you that now. Uh, so if you do want to work on the railway, just, you know, really give it some thought. Would I be able to handle the shifts? Because there's, uh, we do get quite a few people that join and I don't think they quite realise the, uh, oh yeah, hang on, didn't put it in, uh, didn't put it in neutral, I know. I'm going to blame fatigue. Yep, that's, uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. When we get to, uh, to Blackfriars, I'm going to put a fatigue report in. Yeah. Uh, Thameslink management would absolutely love that, I'm sure. 
But uh, yeah, make sure that you can cope with shifts, because if you can't get out of bed in the morning, you're, uh, you might like trains, but if you cannot get out of bed in the morning, oh, it's, uh, it's not going to be a pleasant place for you to work, I can tell you that now. I mean, luckily I can get out of bed in the morning, but I'm just a little bit tired. Maybe I'll have a strong coffee or a Lucasade, who knows. An afternoon nap, perhaps. Oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? I'd like an afternoon nap. Because, yes, I am 80. Right, so I'm firing on now at a whopping... 50 miles an hour up to Crofton Park. It's uh, This is kind of the speed limit round here, just driving through suburban London. It's quite slow. There we go. We'll actually get on the brakes. You know, if we, if we could actually stop at this station, that would be lovely. Oh, Southeastern class 375 going the other way there. Assuming it's a 375, the, well it is, I, I read the unit number on the front. Uh, they do have some 377s now, I believe, at uh, Southeastern. I don't know if they're borrowing them from uh, Southern or if they've permanently got them. But uh, yeah, the, the Southeastern have got some uh, 377s. And then they've got some that have been renumbered 375s, which is just an headache, isn't it? You know, you're just like, no, leave them as they are. You know, don't change it. Right, what time are we due away from Crofton Park? 15.58, so we're still on time. We're going to Nunhead, Peckham Ride, Denmark Hill, Elephant to Castle. Oh, we've got a bit of a... Bit of a gap there between Denmark Hill Elephant and Castle. Heck, all six minutes. Can get some tickets checked in that time. Oh, oh yeah, I've just realised we don't have a guard on board. That's upsetting, isn't it? I'll get used to this. At some point, I will start learning. I'll start, well, I've, I've learned that that's what you do. I shall start remembering to put the damn thing in uh, in neutral. There we go. Right, full steam ahead. Up to 50, please. Yeah, lovely. Good stuff. Oh, is that the shard I see before me? I do like that about uh, this this uh, Dover and Ramsgate route is a very, very well done route. And like I say, I can't connect with it on a personal level because I've never been here, you know, down down this area of the country. I have been to London. I've been on a 700, you know, but this um, mostly it's like London to Brighton that we go. I've kind of not really done any of the southeastern network, but it's a very, very well done route. And if someone can enjoy it, who's not... Uh, you know, who's absolutely not from here at all, never been on the route. I think that's good. You know, I, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, a lot more people from round here will probably enjoy it more because, uh, you know, you. it's always nice to play a game and point out where you live, you know. You play this, you drive your local route, or you fly on X-Plane, you fly over your house, you point down. Ah, it's my house, how lovely. You know, I mean, nobody logs onto Google Maps and just is in all that the house is there, you know, but, but they do on simulation games. Single yellow, ooh, just to uh, just to spice things up there. Into Nunhead with a, uh, a red signal at the end of the platform. That's not what we need. Maybe we're following something. I don't mind following something. I know you're. At oh no, we've got a green. Ah, oh, it was just a it was just a slow downy yellow signal. Yeah, I don't mind uh, riding the yellows as uh, as we call it. Because it makes driving a bit more interesting. Sometimes it can be uh, I'm not going to say boring, but it's just slightly less interesting when you're flying along at 100 miles an hour 
you know, and you've got no no signals to slow down for. You know, you, you kind of, oh, well, this is nice, you know, but if you're always having to, if you're catching a train up in front and you're having to really manage your speed, uh, then, of course, you, you do, uh, you do kind of have a bit more to think about, don't you? Let's get that door shut. I didn't put it in neutral again. Urgh! Deary me. Right, next stop, Peckham Rye. Peckham Rye, a couple of minutes. Kind of reminds me a bit like the South London Network add-on. And the, the North London route add-on where, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of stop after stop after stop, plodding around... Although, as I say that, I realise, uh, I think, it's a North London line, It's uh, they are dual voltage, aren't they? Because they use the Class 313s, well, they don't anymore, they used to. But they all the Ventress now, London Overground. And 378s, of course. Another Thames link going the other way there. But yeah, they uh, they use a lot of overhead line as well on London, un London Underground. London Overground, sorry. A lot of overhead line on London Overground. Speak of the devil. Hang on a second, 378s? They're not overhead wired. What am I talking about? I'm talking rubbish is what I'm talking. Heck. I thought they had pantag... No, of course they... Oh, I don't know. I don't know, I've got a dick. Are they dual voltage, 378s? Capital stars? Come on, someone help me out here. Let's, uh, let's... Oh no, that's the uh, that's the guard buzzer. Right there we go. We uh, we don't need to buzz the guard because again we've not got one. Have you got a pantograph on top, sir? I'm going to put my train in neutral. Yes, you have. Right, they are dual voltage. I know. Oh, well, I don't feel like quite so much of a spanner now. Way behind the wall, where uh, clearly the, the the Thameslink passengers can't look at the London uh, London Overground. I keep wanting to say Loverground. London Overground, they're, they're not worthy of us looking, so they built this wall here so that we didn't have to see them. Got quite a while here, haven't we? You know, just, just a little bit of a while. Where actually are we on the map? Ah, right, so from, from Orpington down here, we, obviously there's this lot down here, but we've come up here, and then we've come up here, and across and round, so we're actually going round here, and up to Blackfriars, because obviously this is London and Victoria down here, so we're going up this way. Right, I've got you. See, every day's a school day, Joe's always learning. He says he's always learning. He's learning when he's listening, which is seldom. You know, seldom listening, but yeah. Oh, look at that! It's uh, it's nice. You should see the passenger view on the seven oh seven. Oh, we're uh, that we're setting off at exactly the same time. Being the mature adult that I am, I'm just driving my train to my timetable. I ain't racing you. Yes, I'm winning. He says, "No, I'm not racing." Uh, when I when I thought I wasn't winning, I'm no, oh, I'm not racing. Don't you worry. Where's he going? Is he going up there? No, he's not. Not really any point in speeding up, is there? Although it does go to... Oh, 60 and then look, 20. Flipping 20. Deary me. No wonder nobody's using the train this morning, look. There's nobody here. Any? Oh, there's one woman. 
She's uh, she's not aware it's 20 from here. She thinks it's an express quick service. Should we tell her? I've overshot that flipping platform again. Oh, dear me. Too busy worrying about whether that woman's going to be late for work. The fictional woman. Oh, we're on the platform. It's fine. We're, we're still in front of the signal, so you can see. You can see your aspect. It's absolutely fine. Nothing to worry about there. Into neutral. I think, to be honest with you, we're, uh, we're running a little bit early. Oh, I see. What is happening there? There is doors open. He's just making door opening noise. Oh, they are! No, oh, no, report it to the signaller. There's the... Oh, there's the doors open in your carriage, sir. You've not stopped and you've just opened the doors. That's uh, that's at least some rule book violation. You know, your manager's not going to be very happy. Or is that what they've started doing on London Overground just to, uh, you know, to speed up the process? You, We don't actually stop the trains anymore. You just have to leap out. We'll slow down and you just leap in and out at your, uh, at your will. Yeah, we don't actually stop anymore due to the fact that we can fit a few more trains in the section if we if we keep them moving at all times. I'm surprised Thameslink haven't started doing that, to be perfectly honest with you. Because they like to have uh, a good few trains in the section, don't they? Right, go! We have a single yellow. Don't tell me we're going to be following this London Overground chappy. Yeah, we'll start slowing down for this 20. Are we going to have a red, I wonder? I mean, there's been a massive safety of the line incident already. Oh, I see. It's one of those where uh, Dovetail actually put the speed marker after you meant to have slowed down. I did think it were a bit funny then when the junction was coming. Like, why would you slow down after the junction? That's a bit of a weird way of doing things, isn't it? Oh, we don't stop here, wherever here is. We've joined another lot of line, look. Where actually are we there, I wonder? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, Loughborough Junction. Oh, is that where that is? Oh, okay. Yep, I'll, uh, I'll take your word for it. Can we not accelerate to more than 20 now? This is ludicrous. We could do 40 across here, surely. No? Nope. Okay, if you insist. Oh, if this were transport fee, we would have been going around that corner at 100. If not more. Oh, hang on. Not quite there yet. Come on. Go! Rah, full steam ahead. Oh, we've got a whole one and a half miles between stops. We have been treated. Oh, Shard's getting a big bit a bit bigger, isn't he? You can see him on the left hand side.
Oh, you can even see the gherkin. It looks like it's got a bit shorter and fatter than it's meant to be. I like how the train, the train's rocking about quite a bit while we're uh, while we're driving here. I don't know if that's a route thing or if that's an Armstrong Powerhouse thing, or if that's simply a Dovetail Games uh, Dovetail Games thing. I mean, I know they all kind of jolt about as you're going, but this seems to do it a bit more. It seems to kind of wobble a bit more than, uh, than some of the other stuff. I know these units are quite wide, aren't they? Compared to uh, compared to some of the other units. Well, give him a, uh, a little toot there going the other way. Shortly arriving into Elephant Castle for all you uh, OMSI 2 add on London lovers. Here we are, Elephant and Castle. You've seen it from underneath when we've driven under in our bus. And now you can see it from the train point of view. Lovely. Very nice indeed. I mean, it's a four-platform station. It's not really anything special, is it? The way it was represented in London, it kind of struck me as this big, you know, big station with plenty of platforms. But it's just a normal station. You know, nothing special. There we go, we're a little bit past the uh, the stop car board, but as long as we're on the platform, that's all that matters. Yeah, there we go, so if we, uh, we pop out, if we zoom out here, that's where we drive down, look, from Elephant and Castle. Drive down here, look, I mean, obviously London kind of is, is representing of the, you know, the kind of junctions a little bit better than train sim. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like we're a little bit misrepresented here. There's an NRM, look. Another one spawning. Yeah, I, I do sort of feel uh, that this could be done a little bit better around there. But I guess if you're driving it from the actual station, you don't see all down there, do you? So uh, we'll let them off. We'll let them off. You know I absolutely love any excuse to uh, to rip Dovetail Games a new one. But to be fair, this is incredible. And I've always said that about them. The roots that Dovetail build are normally absolutely fantastic. They're normally out of this world. It's just the trains that, oh, yeah, hang on, there we go, it's in neutral. Are you, are you happy now? Yeah, are we all happy? Yeah, the uh, the actual routes that Dovetail built are fantastic. So, you know, the detail is fantastic. They, they're really, really good. The things that let them down is the trains, and I just think it's because they don't care. You know, like the 700 was absolutely abysmal when that came out. And I think that Dovetail know that within, like, a few weeks... Armstrong Powerhouse is going to pop another pack out. You know, and uh, an announcement pack. So why would they bother? You can't blame them, can you? Why waste time on something that's just going to be improved by another company straight away? Or almost straight away? You know, and, and the answer is, for any good business, it's not. I mean, it's, is it morally correct? No, probably not. But, uh, but you can see why they do it. But the roots, the roots are very, very, very good. And I'll stand by them for that. Whoever is in their root department really does need to be proud of themselves with this one. Right, off we go. Next and final stop, London Blackfriars. Lovely. Go, go. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not as quick on uh, on DC as AC, is it? You can really feel how sluggish it is in comparison. I mean, it's no worse than uh, than any of the 450s, 444s, anything like that. On DC is slower, it's just how it is. Plus, don't forget, I mean, it probably only plays a small part, but the friction of the shoes picking up the electricity is also slowing it down, you know. The, uh, is that the shard in front? Oh no, the shard's there. Are we going to say it looks a little bit low poly and somewhat less impressive uh, closer up? But no, we'll let him off because that is in fact not the shard. The shard's over there. So that means London Bridge is over there somewhere, doesn't it? To the right.
Hell, there's, uh, there's quite a few signal sections in uh, succession here, isn't there? They're not very far apart at all. Yeah, they really are not far apart, are they? I remember when this was shut. Can you not see London Black? Can you not see the London Eye from uh, from Blackfriars? Is that not round here somewhere? Again, I'm I'm not entirely sure. I thought you could. Obviously not, unless it's fallen down. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, I didn't realise it was 20. Sorry, I was too busy looking for the wheel. Uh, of course, this has all been redone, hasn't it, in the last uh, last few years? Well, thank you so much for watching. Here we are, London Blackfriars, the terminus of this video today. This train will be continuing on to Luton, but of course without us. If you have enjoyed the video, then do, of course, click the like button. Helps the video do better, and that makes a happy joke. Plus, if you like your train simulator stuff, that's a surefire way to make sure that I do more videos. You know, if they're not successful, I won't do videos, because what's the point? But yeah, sling it a like, and of course, if you haven't already, where are we? There we are. If you haven't already, please do make sure that you subscribe, because of course, we've got plenty more train simulator things coming out this year, and uh, I would hate for you to miss them, so make sure you click that subscription bell, uh, the subscription button and the notification bell so you never miss out on any future Train Simulator episodes. Other than that, as I say, thank you so much for watching today and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Cheerio! Goodbye for now.